Welcome everyone to Psalms for Life. And we want to begin by thanking uh, Esther Ella Gorovich for sponsoring this class, this ongoing series. And may it be a source of merit, may it be a source of bracha for her and her family. Okay, uh, we're going to be doing uh, Perek Vav today, Psalm 6. And Psalm 6 is a segula for healing the eyes. And we may not normally or always see why a psalm is a segula for something. We'd have to really examine deeply, but today hopefully we'll see fairly easily why this is related to healing and specifically the eyes, okay? And this is, um, the, the ramifications of this are huge and extremely important. Okay, so I'm gonna actually read my to home out of another book. Hold on one second, a different safer here. So let's do an overview of the Psalm briefly. So David HaMelech was sick in bed. King David was sick in bed for 13 years. Okay. And he was suffering with a terrible illness when he composed this psalm. And he accepted his illness as a means of giving him insight into how to come closer to Hashem, how to do even more tshuva. And um, I would like to, um, I, I think I'm going to begin with a psalm and then we'll, uh, with, with a verse, and then we will um, discuss a little more about this particular psalm. So it begins, Lamanatseach bin Ginos al Hashaminis, Mizmor le David. Okay. For the conductor, remember that word, Lamanatseach, we discussed it a few weeks ago. Binginos, which is with the Neginos. Some say that it's an instrument, but most say it means an instrumental or musical accompaniment. Okay. Al Hashaminis on the eight stringed harp. You hear the word Shimona in there for eight. Mizmor Ladavi, which we know. Okay. So we begin with this idea of the eight stringed harp. And what we want to, um, hold on, I'm admitting people while I'm talking. What we want to know from this word, Sheminis, is what is the eight stringed harp? So at the time that David, sick in bed, riddled with a terrible illness, which really drained him 13 years, okay? He, the, at that time, the harp had seven strings. The general harp had seven strings. We are told that during the times of Mashiach, the harp that will be played will have eight strings, hence the name Sheminis, like Shimona. okay? In Olam Haba, okay, in the world to come, the far world to come here and the world to come up there, the harp that's played has 10 strings, okay? We translate it as harp. Kinor is also translated as harp. They're, you know, exactly what we mean by harp. It's a harp-like instrument. So as I said in the first verse, this was something that David composed for the eight-string harp for messianic times, okay? Which is very interesting because the subject of this psalm is David's illness, the reasons for his illness, and his insights. That's the shot. So the simple meaning. Okay. So the, um, the psalm continues, okay, with this idea of um, what is the, the, um, the reason for his illness. Okay, and the reason for David's illness, which is something we'll say a few of the verses as we go along, but the reason for this illness is David's 
love and his misguided love. What do I mean? David fell in love twice that we know of with Abigail and with Bathsheba. He fell in love. Now, other people in the Bible also had this love at first sight, falling in love idea, okay, which isn't, by the way, the main love that we express it between man and wife in Judaism. It's part of that. So the other people who fell in love were Adam and Chava, um, uh, also um, um, uh, Rivka and Yitzchak, and Yaakov and Rachel. They all had love at first sight. David had love at first sight, and he didn't handle it well at all, especially in the case of Bathsheba. And this psalm is David's unfolding of why he's suffering this terrible illness. And the reason is, is because of how he handled the situation with Bathsheba. So we're going to go a little bit into the history. Okay. Um, David knew that a very great person would be born to him from Bathsheba. He already knew this. And that person, of course, was Shlomo. Okay. Shlomo Hamela, King Solomon, who would actually build the Beis HaMikdash, the temple. And Bathsheba um, was a tremendously wise woman, brilliant woman, holy spiritual woman, and a beautiful woman, very hard to resist on every front. And David found out she was married to Uriah, who was a general, actually he was a captain fighting under the command of Yoav. And before, before men went to war in those days, they would get divorced. Why? Because if, God forbid, they were killed and God forbid their body was lost or unrecoverable, the wife would be left an aguna. What is an aguna? So when a man and woman get married, some, obviously some of you know this already, when a man and woman get married and there is a breakup, whether through death or through the husband leaving or whatever, and this the kasuba and the, there is no divorce, okay? The, the, there is no get, halachic divorce. The woman becomes what's called an aguna, a chained woman, unable to remarry. So if somebody was lost like this in a war and they couldn't find the body, that, that she would not be able to remarry. And that would be obviously a very terrible suffering for, for a woman. So the, the custom was for men to divorce. Now, David knew this. And he, whether he sent Uriah directly to war, Uriah was going to war anyway, he was sent to the front. And Yoav got instructions. Remember, Yoav was his, I guess, general, big boss over Uriah. Yoav got instructions to, um, to not put Uriah in a safe position and to not rally the troops to go out of their way to save his life. This is, by the way, not a normal Jewish practice. If we look in Israel, we know that even the IV, IDF, which is based on secular um, secular wisdom, not necessarily Torah wisdom, even they will not leave a soldier behind. So Jew doesn't leave a life behind. So David didn't necessarily violate rules or halachas, but he didn't want anyone to go out of their way to save Uriah. Uriah was killed and he married Bathsheba. And the, he did this, and this was considered for him a very, very great transgression. Now, for someone else, it's not a nice thing to do. For David, who was a tzaddik, this was a great transgression. On the scale of what he was potentially capable of spiritually and righteously, this was a big failure. In this psalm, Okay, in this psalm, and if you've just entered the classroom, please go back and watch the beginning. In this psalm, what we find out is that 
the illness that David has, he's beginning to recognize why he has it. And as I mentioned in the beginning, with the eyes and the, the, the healing, we'll find out why. So the next verse of the psalm after the, uh, the, uh, we're going to just do it in order um i don't want to skip around too much today if possible depending on the time is um that he asks hashem not to rebuke him okay very important he says hashem i know you're angry with me and there's a few verses for that i know you're angry with me don't rebuke me okay please don't chastise me don't punish me anymore. I've been lying in bed sick for 13 years. You don't need to punish me anymore. Please have mercy on me. Why? Because I get it. I get what's going on. And I understand why I'm sick in bed. Now, this concept is a, a, a difficult concept for many people. And rightfully so. When somebody is sick and is suffering, to say, I understand why, okay, it's a, it's a kind of a high madrega. It's to say, I have insight into the nature of the correction that I, that I am obtaining from my suffering. Now, most people with other types of suffering, they can see it right away. So, you know, if you don't give my sir or homesh, you don't give the right amount of tzedakah, according to halacha, you know, it says very obviously, you're going to lose that money and spend it on things you'd rather not spend it on. The famous example that you may have heard this story is the story of you didn't give your, your minimum 10% and you have to go to a dentist and you owe, let's say, $10,000 in, in, uh, in tzedakah and that, that treatment at the dentist, the whole thing cost $10,000. Okay, we see this if our eyes are open, we see, ah, ah, I see what's going on here. But with physical suffering and illness, very, very difficult. Because why? We're weak. We are feeling that this suffering is more than we can bear. And in fact, this is what David himself says. Um, he says, Okay, sorry, I have so many, uh, so many safer uh, to helm in front of me. It's a little bit hard to keep track sometimes. Okay, he says, um, "Chaneni Hashem ki umlal ani rifaeni Hashem ki nifhalu atzamai." So, favor me, Hashem. Be gracious with me. Be gentle with me. I am weak. I'm feeble. Heal me, Hashem, because my bones are shaking with terror, okay? So he's saying here that he's implying that he has some awareness of what was going on. He's not saying my bones are shaking in pain. He's not saying, oh, this pain. What he's saying is, is his bones are shaking with terror. Why? Um, Okay, the nafshi nivhala meod vaata Hashem ad masai. My soul too is totally terrified. And you, Hashem, how long? Okay, so what does this mean? So, what's going on in these verses is that he's expressing this realization to us. And remember back to the beginning of this class, this is messianic. Why? Because the message is for us more than ever now in the messianic age. Just the, the Mashiach is about to be revealed. So this message is saying we're weak. Our souls are weak. We're ill. But we are asking you, Hashem, to be gracious with us. What does grace mean? What does this chen, this graciousness mean? It means that mercy, kindness, and compassion is going to outweigh true justice. We can't survive with total justice. It's too much for us. Now, as it was even too much for David HaMelech, his suffering, his physical suffering was great. His spiritual suffering was greater. So today, 
where we see that the world has gone completely insane and we see that there's so much fear and anxiety and worry, even among people who have Torah and have information about what's going on, every new thing that comes along could potentially be the thing that tips you over the edge into fear and terror. Okay, we're asking Hashem to not judge us with strictness because we're not going to succeed. We're going to fail if he judges us with strictness, every one of us. We're asking Hashem to judge us with his graciousness, to give for the sake of giving. Rebbe Nachman has a concept that is, a, it's a Kabbalistic concept, but Rebbe Nachman speaks about this in depth. The treasury of unearned gifts. This is where we ask Hashem to, to give to us, to heal us, to be kind to us, to alleviate our suffering, to make things easier for us, even though we know that we don't deserve it. And if someone does have merits that they could be rewarded, such as King David, what a tzaddik, he was such a great tzaddik, he had a couple of flaws, but he was a great tzaddik. He could have used his merits and cried out to Hashem, look, I'm a tzaddik Hashem, I'm the king of Israel, I'm holy, I follow your Torah, I teach Torah, I inspire people, I love you, Hashem, please heal me. He didn't do that. He said, be gracious to me, give me healing. Because why? So he was humble. On the one hand, he didn't feel he, he necessarily deserved it. And I think it's the al Sheikh who says, on the other hand, he didn't want to use up what merits he had in this world. He didn't want to pay off the healing with the merits that he had, the mitzvahs that he'd done. He wanted Hashem just to be gracious to him because he didn't want to trade. He wanted the reward in the world to come. And even more than that, he didn't feel meritorious enough. So this is a message to us today. Hashem, you know, I'm still struggling with everything. I'm on the path, but I have my moments. For some, the, for some, the moments where I slip off are greater than others. We all have our Batsheva moments, right? So David, um, David knew why he was sick. And this is important. And how did he know why he was sick? So he knew because, I'm going to skip a couple of lines here. Um, hold on one second, please. Okay. But Anachti Asiche Becholaila Mitasi Bdimasi Arsi Amse. I am exhausted with my groans, my crying, my Anachti, my, my complaining. My, 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 oh, Hashem, ay, 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 right? I'm exhausted from this. Every night I drench my mita, my bed, with tears and I soak my couch. Okay. David is telling us that every night he makes, he quoted it. Rebbe Nachman explains this to us and reveals this to us, but other tzaddik have revealed this to us in the past. Every night, David made Hitbodadud. He talked to Hashem. And what was the main thrust of this Hitbodadud, this Hitbodadud, was to look at himself in a mirror and say, I want to serve you. I want to do good in this world. But, but let me talk about my weaknesses, my failings. Hashem, I know my strengths, okay? But let me talk about my weaknesses and help me do teshuva. Help me come close to you. Everybody has strengths. Everybody has weaknesses. But our strengths are in general rooted in our nakuda toba, our good point inside, which is the neshama. So anytime we use our strengths to do a mitzvah, okay, clear-cut mitzvah in the case that I'm speaking about here, Okay, 
And anytime we use those strengths, it's really coming directly from our neshama. Yes, our free will is involved. And, and yes, it's commendable, but it's coming from the Nakuda Tova. But anytime that we veer off, okay, that's the point that we have to look at in order to really heal from lying in our bed at night soaked in tears. Okay. And David HaMelech says, my eyes, my eyes are dimmed. I'm sorry. With my see, next verse, but he says here, with my tears, I soak my, my couch. He's crying and crying and crying from his eyes. Why are the eyes mentioned? Okay, the next one is um, Mikas Eni Ascha. Okay, Bechol uh, My eye is dimmed with anger and uh, aged by my tormentor. So why is he mentioning eyes and tears and eyes and tears and eyes dimmed? Because as I mentioned in the beginning, this is a segula, this psalm, an avert segula for healing of the eyes because his illness, his soul illness was connected to his eyes. He saw Bathsheba and he desired her and he acted on the desire of his eyes. Now, the biggest struggle of this generation might very well be desires of the eyes. We see, we want. And obviously this doesn't just apply to men and it doesn't just apply to the attraction of physical beauty. It also applies to how we use our eyes in a variety of ways. So we see something we want it. We want this beautiful, you know, this, this, we see, we see, you know what they call food porn, right? That's with our eyes. Um, a, a, a beautiful, um, a beautiful house. We lust after it, whatever it is we want, we want, we want, we feel that our eyes are hungry. David is telling us that for him, remember, this is a message for the messianic age. If we look at that Shminis back in the beginning, he's telling us that this is where we get into trouble. Okay. With our desires, which are often, not always, but often instigated by the desires of our eyes. Now, what's also interesting here is that it's, it works the other way too. The things that our eyes despise also can have an effect on our spiritual development and can lead us off the path. So having an eye in hara versus an eye in tov, looking at your brothers and sisters harshly, critically, um, judging them, God forbid speaking negatively or harshly to them, but judging them, this is also the way in which we injure our eyes. And we injure our heart when we do this as well. So the message for us in this age where the Ga'ula is just about to descend on us is we're sick, we're feeble. Okay, we're sick and feeble. And our frailness, our frailty is very much due to how we see things, how we view things, okay? Our point of view. We can think about this and then we do what our sweet singer of Israel did. We make it go to do. We talk to Hashem. Hashem, my eyes were led astray by this. It happens to all of us. Now, how we reconcile the desire of eyes and use them for good, that's a whole other subject because we can. We can certainly use it for good. But the pull and the desire is what David realizes made him sick. Now, most of us, if we saw something, we had a desire for it, we don't have to worry about being struck down and being sick for 13 years from a desire like this. Okay, why? We're not at David's level. We're at our own level. However, if this becomes habitual, if this becomes problematical, and we give in to the lusts of our eyes, whether, again, whether they're related to sexuality or something else, it doesn't matter, really. We want, we want, we want, 
Delphi has a message for us, a personal message for us. And that message is, is stop what you're doing, pay attention and ask Hashem to be gracious with you. Ask him to heal you with his graciousness. Ask him to accept our tshuva. Hashem, please forgive me. I know what I did. I've examined myself. When? Every day. We say, breast love. A breast love or a Yom Kippur, breast love. It's important. I'm not denying it. But it's a, such a time of joy in breast love. Why? We've been making his and, con and confessing every day of the year. Okay. Now, again, if you're new to Hippodadu, if you're new to this idea, you don't have to begin with the self-examination. Begin with connecting with Hashem. Begin with expressing positive things with Hashem. Your lacks, ask Hashem to help you. There are formulas for confession. They are important. But again, if you're new, begin with your strengths. It's fine. Begin feeling close to Hashem. Feel Hashem's love. Because then when you get to the point where you're able to say, oh, Hashem, I transgress. My eyes pulled me after this, okay? Or my, my desires pulled me after that. Or I gave in to having an, uh, 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 an evil eye. God forbid. I and hara. Oh, I can't believe I looked at somebody with anger or jealousy or hatred. Please, Hashem, know that my biggest regret isn't that I, yes, I have regret, regret I harmed someone or I thought negatively or I had a, a negative desire. My biggest regret is that I was so close to you and my own feet, so to speak, walked me away from the path. That's my regret. My love lost between us, Hashem, because I love you, Hashem, and you love me, and how could I do this? So this particular psalm is really a, um, an in-depth explanation of David's regret over everything. And later on, he mentions, I mentioned, I already mentioned his tormentors, and he mentions again that they will be slayed. And what is he speaking about here? He's not only speaking about the people who are pursuing him, which if you've been in this class, you know, were legions. Everybody was out to get him. They chased after him, his own son. It was horrible. Okay. But not only that, but his internal tormentors, he wanted slayed. He, he recognized that he had made a misstep and he wanted that to be acknowledged, his recognition, I'm, I want my Yetzirah to be slayed. I just want to serve you purely, Hashem. So there's, you know, this psalm, I, I love this psalm and I, I really wish we could you know, go a little more depth, line by line, but we got it all in in half an hour, so I'm very relieved. And, um, um, what we're going to do now is we are going to, um, I'm going to first ask anybody to please uh, put names in the chat that you would like us to keep in mind when we set, say the daily to Hillam. So we'll start with that. And if anybody has a very particular question that's absolutely relevant, nothing tangential today, please. We don't have a lot of time. You can ask it as well. So if you would like to type into the chat, you'll see the chat on your right, okay? Names that you wish to um, include as we say the da daily Tehillim, they should be send it, said in a merit for their refuah. Please type them in and I'm going to name. Okay. okay, the last two lines of the psalm, hold on, okay, um, so the last two lines of this parak is Hashem has heard my plea, and Hashem will accept my prayers, so it's, a, I'm actually glad you asked, because I probably should have finished it off, um, very quickly, the idea is, is that David was confident because of his closeness to Hashem, because he made he bow to do it every day, because he felt his teshuva was accepted, that Hashem has already heard him and Hashem is already accepting his prayer. 
He's already confident. Um, we know the story, I may have mentioned it in this class or another class about Reb Nussin, who went to Davin for his needs on Pesach and his, um, his, uh, as soon as he davened, he felt calm. And then when he went to the marketplace, the person actually gave him his money for his Pesach needs. His expression didn't change because he already knew he had done everything he could. We think our hishtablis, the things that we have to do is running and doing and running and doing. The main hishtablis, the main action a Jew has to take is prayer. The main action. That's the first step. And once we do this, um, we have achieved that. So the last line is, yes, that's actually the last verse. That's one verse. Um, may all my enemies be ashamed. Okay, may my foes be ashamed and terrified. They will regret. They will be ashamed. Okay, that's what I was speaking about, his tormentors, his enemies. That's actually one verse. And it's the idea of that the external ones are going to be taken out. He has confidence in this with Hashem and also his internal ones as well. Okay. So the idea is, is that he already felt Hashem's graciousness by the end of this song. He felt that graciousness he was requesting. Okay. Thank you for asking that. You know, you know, El, I'm just trying to get through it. So I appreciate it. You're cramming in a lot in this time. Okay. So we have a lot of names uh, to daven for. Yafa, Rezel, Basara, uh, for Rufua Shlema, Chai Esther Malka Baslea, for Rufua Shlema, uh, Rachel Batsara, Manuel Ben Eliza, um, Re Re Rebecca Bat Ruth, Terry Bat Helen, Eliza Bat Rachel, um, Batya Bat Manya, please, Batya Bat Manya for Rufua Shlema, let's keep the name in mind, Binyamin Fischel Ben Shoshana for Rufua, okay. So please let's keep all those names in mind. I want to um, also tell you the segulas for, for today's Psalms. And I also want to, um, to again, thank uh, Esther Ella Gurevich for sponsoring this class. Okay, so today's, so first we're going to um, say Parak uh, 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 chapter six of Psalms. And then we're going to do today's Psalms. And today is uh, the fourth of Kislev, Dalit Kislev. And the Psalms are 23 through 28. And 23, I'm going to tell you the Sagulas now, is basically an affirmation of a Muna, a statement of your faith. Okay. And Psalm 24 is um, two is a, a double double um, segula one for hatzlacha success in financial matters, and the other is protection against the flood. Now we can interpret flood literally, or we can interpret it um, the way Rebbe Nachman does, which is this idea of the flood of atheism and immorality that's currently right now before Mashiach is revealed. Okay, the next is um, Psalm 25 is for help in difficult times. Person who's struggling with personal difficulties or in the case of today, the insanity in this world, the difficulties of the insanity in this world. Psalm, uh, uh, um, that Psalm 26, same for difficulties. Psalm 27, it says if you want to conquer a city in battle, okay? We can, we can sort of extrapolate from that if we want to conquer the Yetzirah, okay? Which sets up, which sets up a, a city in our, in our uh, psyche sometimes, okay? And Psalm 28 is for peace with an enemy. Extremely important, Psalm 28. So I'm going to turn off the recording and we're going to say, uh, the Psalms for today.